Hello and welcome to PD Bytes Presents St. Louis School Library Year in Review. I am your host, Shannon Steimel, and I also have two special guest hosts with me today. Hi, I'm Victoria Jones. I'm the coordinator of district libraries in the school district of Clayton and the middle school librarian in Clayton. And I'm Alicia Landers. I'm the director of curriculum technology for the Melville School District. So our session for today is uh, kind of a play on words here that uh, is with our uh, Elementary Librarian of the Year for the Greater St. Louis Library Association, and that's Matthew King. Welcome, Matthew. So, Matt, we thought we'd start off by sharing this uh, video that you made about the transformations in your library, and then we'll uh, talk to you about that, if that's okay. Sure. I made the video because our district that I'm currently in makes us, um, well, allows us to present a board. Um, each, at the end of the year, has a board report. And so this was from last year. I just wanted to show them the changes in just one year um, at where, where I teach currently, Discovery Elementary School. Okay. So um, you can see from the very beginning, though, how different, it, well, you'll see at the end how different it already looks. Because when I went, it was, um, it was a K through two building. And when they hired me, um, I'm the first um, full-time librarian they've had. They used to rotate through. And so it changed from a K through two building to a three through five building. So the district was nice enough to provide me with additional resources to um, update the collection, especially for those three through five um, students. And so the library changed dramatically, and you'll see hopefully in the video coming up. with our schools in the region your school is newer I know you mentioned the uh, transition in the age groups but tell me just a little bit more about like why you made the transformation you did in the library um, when I came um, it was um, very I, I thought that it, it met the needs of the students at the time but as we transitioned from a third K through five building I thought it was beneficial to make the library a more uh, 
to change the space simply so the kids wouldn't, who came back to the building would like, oh, it's the same old library. So I wanted to give them a brand new experience. Um, I started by painting the library because I thought that was the easiest thing to do. But after I painted and I started my library advisory team, which I hope we talk about soon, um, the library advisory team um, said that it wasn't meeting their needs. And so it was a group of, I believe, like seven students who started meeting in September. We created a mission and a vision statement together from that mission and vision statement. We went on to um, do a collection analysis using Tidal Wave, and the kids were able to look at like what books we had plenty of, what books we needed more of. Then we had a meeting with a, a book representative and she came in and uh, we gave them $500 to spend on books that they get to, got to chose. And they, they chose those books. And then they talked about the space and how the space was not working for them. And um, even from the very beginning, I was pretty happy with the space, but according to the students, they were not. And so they created multiple designs and they voted on which ones they liked. They um, tweaked um, each other's designs and they came up with the space that we have today and it's and I, I, I the kids love it um right we just did a study i not a study i just did um statistics before our board report for this year and this year we have 103 on an average per week coming into the library to spend their recess and which i think is pretty amazing so i love how you use that advisory team and their input to create your library space. Um, you really gave them that voice and choice. Uh, I'm also interested in some of the other programs that you have in your library. I saw that there's Makerspace, Broadcast, and also a monthly STEAM challenge. Can you talk a little bit about those? Sure, so I need to begin by saying everything I do in my library is stolen from other great librarians around the area. I think that Harry Wong says, you know, a good educator is one who always steals, right? <laughs> and I tell them the best. And luckily, my PLN, I'm trained by great people. Um, so I use their ideas and I steal from them as much as I possibly can. So um, that being said, the STEAM Challenge came from um, Kelly Oliva when okay. she was BTC and she talked about how she was using it at her high school level. And I was thinking, well, if she's doing it at the high school level, I could move it down into the elementary level. And the kids loved it. Um, each month, they challenged themselves. And um, it's a friendly competition. In April, we had a how many pennies um, can your boat hold? And there was a contest. <laughs> each day, a kid would come into the library and say, how many did the last team make? And so they're trying to constantly beat themselves with new designs and, and um, challenges like that. So I think that's, that's a, a, a great um, thing to have. Also, Makerspace. Um, so a little bit about me. I was a, a classroom teacher. This is my 25th year of teaching. And so I was a classroom teacher for um, 21 years um, in multiple grade levels. And then I moved to the library less than four years ago. So this is my fourth year as being a librarian. Um, and so moving into the library, um, it, and I took the mega test. And so I'm currently working on my degree now to get um, my library certification. Um, and I found that I was not prepared just by taking the mega test. I realized that there's more to being a librarian um, than just checking out books. And um, I started research and I did all of this. And one of the biggest trends at that time was makerspace and how everyone was talking about how important makerspace is because it allows kids to collaborate, um, to have critical thinking. Um, it actually lets them fail which a lot of times I don't think we understand. Um, I don't think kids understand that failing is part of learning, right? That you can um, try and fail. And as long as you don't stop at the fail part, you're learning. As long as you try again. And so I added Makerspace and um, I focused so much on the te technical part of it, the technology pieces, like the coding, um, the dash dots, um, the Ozobots, um, 3D printer, we got a 3D printer. So I focus so much on that. I don't think I really focus so much on the less um, computer stuff. So we started adding those Steam challenges, which also helped with that as well. Um, and then daily broadcasting is something I brought to Discovery um, simply because they used to do it once a week. And then the principal would call the um, students down and they would do it over the intercom in, in the office. Um, realize that we are a leader in eSchool which focuses on student mm -hmm. voice. Um, we started this, uh, it's called DSTV. Um, it's a great program where we get students who are involved 
They do everything from the start to the finish. And this year I even added editors. So it's all hands off for me. So I start them off the school year and then I'm done. Um, they rotate through, they train each, every two months we get new members involved. They start over again and the editors train them. So it's a gr great program that's ar already working well because kids are really taking ownership of that. That sounds wonderful. I know um, a lot of people spend a lot of time on the broadcast, but I like the systems you have in place that you keep the kids, it, the, the heavy lifting's on them. And they, and they step up very easily, right? And so that's nice because my district is so supportive too. Like if I need something, I say I need this piece or like I needed uh, a new MacBook. And so they provided a MacBook for me so the kids could mm. use that to edit edit themselves so the kids are doing all their editing too so it's nice wow. and also the other nice part about the library advisory team let go back so when i went back and asked my principal for additional funds for the library it, it's more powerful when it comes from a group of students asking okay. for that additional funds and for me coming in saying hey can i have this additional funds so that's another piece that helped with the getting the macbook um, for the kids to use and also some of the furniture we added to the library that's amazing. And I, I was so impressed too in your video. It talked about a hundred more than a hundred kids per week um, come in during their recess time, the time they should <laughs> maybe could just be out doing whatever they want, but they choose to come to the library. Um, are you teaching during that time? And can you tell us a little bit more about what that looks like and how you set that up? Sure. So the nice part is the library should be a safe space, right? So kids whoever they are, wherever they are in their journey, they ha should have a place in the library. And the nice part is some kids don't feel comfortable at recess or, um, and they come to the library just so that they can belong. Um, there's a group of kids who meet just to read books together. There's kids who um, do makerspace. Um, there's kids who work on the computer. Um, there's lots of things that they do during this time. The nice part is, is that um, my principal allows me to have any of my duties is 100% the library. So when the library opens at 8 a.m. and it closes at 3.45 when the kids leave, um, and I am in there the whole time. So the kids can come in at any time throughout the day. They have a path that allows them to enter the library if I'm teaching because we are on a fixed schedule. If I'm teaching, okay. that's exactly what they can do. They can easily um, find a book, go read in the quiet area. They can, if there's a group of them, they want to work in, in back on the tables, they can, or even in maker space. So it just uh, knows that, and, Sometimes I have to warn them, right? You're too loud. I'm trying to teach over here on this side. But for the most part, they do a phenomenal job with everything. That's great. I love how you're teaching kind of those um, skills that they're going to need to be successful in life, you know, that independence and the choosing your own adventure kind of thing and, you know, being good even when you think no one is watching kind of. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, you're also a leader outside of your school. You've talked a lot about leading in your particular library, but tell us a little bit more about the leadership outside your school. You were recognized this year as the elementary librarian of the year for Greater St. Louis. Congratulations on that. And also, I know I met you, I think the first time um, through the American Library Association, and you were selected as the emerging, le emerging leader, excuse me, for the state of Missouri. So tell us a little bit more about um, the different types of leadership things you're doing. So um, one of the best programs ever is the Emerging Leader through ALA. Um, it's a great program that um, allows any librarian within their first five years of becoming a librarian to apply. And um, if you're selected, then you attend both this um, midwinter conference and at midwinter conference, you are put into a cohort, and I have five others in my group who are working on the include um, piece um, for the AASL standards uh, and focusing on EDI, um, which helps, um, of course, focus for learners, um, school librarians, and then school libraries itself. Um, we meet once a week via Zoom, which we're doing today as well. Um, we are given assignments to work on, um, and it's nice because it's really driven by us, what we see, um, what we want to see, um, within the include framework and then that we present at the end uh, of June in Washington DC at the National Conference and um, the document we're creating will be shared by ASL so it's pretty powerful that we're having that impact already um, and that's nice and then I was just selected to um, serve as a greater st. Louis and um, 
has treasure for the group. Oh, great. So as well, yep. Super. Well, thank you for all of your service. I think it's wonderful that um, you're, you haven't been a librarian for that long, but you're getting involved both at the local and at the um, national level. I think it's so important for those of us who've been around and are getting a little oldie moldy to have um, <laughs> some of these new fresh ideas, like you said. You know, you steal ideas, we, we can get some new fresh ideas from you too. So thank you for that. Well, it's nice too when you attend conferences outside of Missouri because you're learning from a whole new um, group of people. So it's very helpful with that too because I love Mazel. And it's a great <laughs> organization because you're able to learn so much from the librarians here in the state of Missouri. But it's also nice too because then you can learn across the United States. That's right. And this year, AASL is in Louisville. So that's a close, kind of close for people. Uh, the St. Louis area people could maybe drive and maybe we'll get more Missouri people to go to that as well. Because I agree with you. I think that national perspective sometimes helps us feel not as alone in our profession. Right. Yeah. Great. So I'm really curious. It sounds like you are just very, very busy, and you shared that you're on a fixed schedule. Um, how how do you manage this? How do you manage to have time for future ready and being involved in the different um, cohorts that you're with? Well, future ready is what we do, right? As librarians, we should be living the future ready. I mean, and so um, I think that um, when you're passionate about um, initiatives, you make time for that. Um, and something I'm very passionate right now about, which is part of Future Ready, is the whole collaboration piece. The idea that, um, and I'm writing my thesis on it too, the idea that um, librarians can impact student achievement. Um, research after research says that. And the way to do that is making sure that you have time to collaborate with teachers. And so the um, best part about the group that I work with, um, the third, fourth, and fifth grade teachers that I work with this year, um, I was able to meet with them um, during their planning time because I have we share some time together and I was able to meet with them um, during that that time we were able to create a, a lesson together using standards that I'm teaching as well as the standards that they they need and we were able to, to work together to build a, a scoring guide from that and so it, it, it's more powerful because a lot of times I thought that I was doing a great job collaborating with teachers when I was curating resources, which I am, right? Curating resources is. Mm -hmm. But um, to get the higher level of collaboration, you really need that co-teaching experience, the idea of creating a scoring guide together. Um, and so it's nice too because um, I was able to do that. So how do I fit it in? It's nice because my principal allows me to stay in the library 100% of the day. So I never have to leave that. Um, the future ready, of course, is built into, into everything you do. From the idea of creating space, um, your standards, literacy, um, your budget, all of that is part of everything you do. So it's very nice. Um, the budget, I'm always constantly looking for new um, funding and building. Um, I just got the um, Danette Ward um, grant from Bayer, which um, gave me $3,000 to purchase like a we do for our library for next year. So that's great. Lowe's gave me a grant for $5,000, which allowed me to purchase mm. a 3D printer. and um playways um i was re received a gift from the daughters of american revolution who came to our school and gave us money to purchase supplies for that so building that community link as well is also part of it so anything you can do um I, because i i don't see how you can separate the two what i do from future right because everything i do is future ready right i mean and that's just part of, of what what's expected of me yeah, that's great, Matt. Thank you so much um, for your leadership and also for sharing with us today. It's really inspiring. I know you've been in education a long time, but it's inspiring to see someone who is newer to library that's that's taking on uh, so much for our, our profession. So thanks. So uh, you mentioned collaboration, and that's going to be one of the big things that we talk about um, at the session that's coming up next, which is our last session, a panel with the Greater St. Louis School Librarians Association officers. So Matt's actually going to be joining us for that next session as well. And Victoria is going to be saying goodbye because she's going to head out to the Cards and uh, Royals game. <laughs> so thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.